Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. With James Holst and Pat McSherry and the rest of the IDO fishing team. We're headed to the best fisheries across the upper Midwest and Canada. We'll fish longer, explore unfished bodies of water, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites in fresh water. Look at that fish. <laughs> this is In-Depth Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of In-Depth Outdoors. I'm James Holston. On today's show, we're in South Central Wisconsin. We're gonna be fishing with PJ Vic. And this is an important show in that this is our final episode of our 16th broadcast season here on Valley Sports. Now today we're gonna try to go out real strong. I mean, we've been all over this great country chasing some really cool bites and we definitely wanna end on a strong note and we think we've got a really cool show for you. We're gonna be targeting giant crappies on a very shallow lake here in Wisconsin that are just starting to move up on shallow structure in preparation for the spawn. So stick around. I think you're gonna love today's show. It's me and PJ Vic in South Central Wisconsin for our final show of season 16 here today on In-Depth Outdoors. The water's a little dirty. Yeah, she's probably churned up a little bit after yesterday. I see it. the clarity still looks pretty acceptable for the Pretty acceptable? Yep. Well, the magic temperature you were looking for, yeah, 62 degrees. It. Yep. We should be timing this beautifully. I'm feeling it. This is a fairly unique crappie spawning situation. Not the only place in the world that I've heard of rocky or a crappie spawning in a situation like yeah. this, but back home where I'm from, you know, I look for spawning crappies. I'm on the outside edges of weed lines. Typically, you're gonna have reeds coming off the shoreline. You're looking for the little areas where the crappies have fanned out kind of a little dish. Water clarity is good. You target those fish. Well, here, water clarity is not good. <laughs> the lake is very, very muddy. And these fish are kind of spawning in a fairly unique scenario. Why don't you tell them what, what you got going on here? Yeah, so the, these are nest spawners. So they, they, they build a nest, and like you said, on a typical lake, even here in Wisconsin, mm -hmm. they're building it in amongst weeds on in sand. Right. Um, well, here, they have no sand. That is not a choice. Uh, so what these fish are actually looking for is rock and gravel beds. And that is what we're looking for here. And, uh, you know, we're, we're fishing Kind of a wind-blown scenario here. I figured that's where the warmest water is going to be. We're up to almost 63 here. Which um, is money. I think we're in for a good day, and I think we might see some really large crappies because these are very shallow, fertile lakes that grow big fish. Let's uh, do a little side image and pass this yep. rock pile. It's kind of nice that it's marked on the map. So. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so yep. here in this top pane up here, I've got side imaging, and you can see the gravel right here. Kind of a little finger that comes out and then juts back in. Some bigger boulders kind of mixed in. It's perfect. And it's shallow. It is really shallow. Yep. Fish, there you go. Ooh, nice one. <laughs> That'll do. All right, I'm just oh. going to swing. PJ's into one. I got one on the uh, spinner there. Decent fish. We just did a little reposition, and we doubled pretty quick. I found Mr. Whiskers. Did ya? <laughs> oh, you lost the lottery, bud. <laughs> Catfish. Fought nice, though, didn't it? And it was nice to see the bobber go down instantly. <laughs> What's working is just a real slow, crawling retrieve. And you can tell you're in the right spot when you're not getting snagged up on the weeds. If you get off the edge of the rocks too much, you get out into this just mucky weed that you can't really fish anything through it. But you can feel it. You slow that spinner down. You feel it kind of bouncing around the rocks down there. And that fish poked it good. That hammered it? It's no surprise that these fish are gonna be a little slower in the mornings. Water temperature's at its lowest. Ooh. And uh, Pete's got another one going on the bobber here. 
Oh, catfish. Oh, oh it was a know. big crappie. Oh, so sad. That was sad. As the water temperatures warm up throughout the course of the day, the fish will just get more fired up. Well, that's two quick bobber bites. Yeah. Like, bang, bang. Boom, boom. Got him. Oh, yeah. Nice one. Good crappie ole. Good crappie. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah. You got that net back there. Yep. Looks like another white. A white crappie? Yep. It's been a minute since I've caught a bunch of those. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a pretty good mixture here in southern Wisconsin. This is one of their uh, major home ranges. But it's a nice fish. We just kind of made a little spot move here. And I find that a lot on these rock piles is you'll find a sweet spot. And it's typically where boulders meet gravel, um, right on that edge. It seems like that's where these fish like to congregate, just off the high point of the rock pile. That one got it pretty good. Not a bad crop. I think we're gonna get much bigger today though. Here's that. 132nd ounce EMC hair jig. Just a beautiful bright color. We got kind of dirty water here today. And as far as uh, color selection goes, I feel like you can never go wrong with anything pink for crappies. Pink, pink and white, that is a great color combination for these fish. There's nothing kind of dirty about this water color, bud. <laughs> you're, being very, you're being very generous. <laughs> Being, being from uh, around here, I, I know how bad it can get. So, uh, in, in comparison to what it normally is, we're, we're, we're sitting in a pretty good place. <laughs> Rain, boat spray, wind, and if you're unlucky enough, even snow. When your drive to work is a highway of water, you need outerwear that you can count on day after day, week after week, year after year. The Rapala Rain Pro and the Rapala Rain Jacket and bibs are exceptionally crafted using premium materials and fitted for comfort. With the right gear, you can weather the storm. Backed by a legendary name you can trust. If you want to know how the best anglers always seem to find fish, stay on fish, and be in the right place at the right time, don't ask them. Just look at the name on the side of their boat. The one that's built 10 million motors, shallow water anchors, and more. No angler's gonna tell you their secrets, but they don't have to, because you already know. Minn Kota, fish for more. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters in Walker, Minnesota has the hottest products for ice fishing at unbeatable prices. Everything from Garmin, Ice Electronics, Ice Shelters, and Ice Clothing from all the top brands. And the newest lithium-powered augers with special everyday pricing on the Garmin LifeScope Ice Bundle. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota, or placing an order online at reedsports.com, our state-of-the-art distribution center ensures you'll get your order fast. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters offers the best service, best price, best advice, guaranteed. Okuma Fishing Tackle offers a complete lineup of reels for the die-hard ice angler. The Okuma Samar 10 and Inspira 20 are a perfect match with your favorite panfish or walleye ice fishing rod. Both feature a long stem handle that fits comfortably in a gloved hand. Cyclonic flow rotor technology that throws water off the reel to minimize ice buildup. And a drag system optimized for use in extreme conditions. Everywhere, every day, every fish. Okuma Fishing Tackle is inspired fishing. I got him, bro. It's a good one. Heck yeah. Just doing the little twitch. Yep. That is a real good one. Bring, bring him over here. I'll bring and him, get him for you. You're a good guy. Come here, you. you that catch twitching one of... is one of my favorite ways to catch those well, fish. I see the twitch is going to work. We've been trying yep. you know, different things today, try to you know hone in on what these fish want. And the uh, the jig and minnow out there under the bobber will, of course, catch crappies, but we can't keep it away from the catfish. So we got rid of the minnows, and now we're just doing the twitch. Letting that little hair jig attract the crappies and the catfish don't seem to like it nearly as much. You caught one that dark in the, in the winter, you'd be like, what's wrong with it? <laughs> right. That's a pretty unique look. There's that little tiny little hair jig. And we're just using that bobber 
to keep it up off the bottom, obviously. But now we're just twitching it, just making that bobber just kind of flutter a little bit. And I'm sure that crappie sees that bucktail just kind of darting around down there, grabs it, and bobber goes down, you do what comes natural, which is just pull back. There's not a lot of finesse to it, as long as you can kind of keep your little twitches at the bobber real micro, very fine. And PJ's taking it to the next level, which is he's fishing a round weighted bobber and all he's mm -hmm. doing is just kind of rolling the bobber. There he is. Very finesse. Nice. You got the scoop back by Twitched you. Twitched him right into it. I do have the scoop back by me. Looks like a nice big white one. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that is a white. And it just gulped that hair, Jake. There is not a left <laughs> on that one. Yeah. What I love about this, when they hit it, there's no doubt. I mean, the bobber no. is douche, gone. Yeah, absolutely. This technique is going back to when I was a kid out here. This has been one of my absolute favorites, especially when they move up shallow. I got oh, one here too. One. Just right at the side of the boat. I'm sitting here listening <laughs> to the PJ talk about, you know, being something from his childhood. Yeah. I was about to say, well, you're kind of acting like a kid too, and my rod just went right straight down. So there's the comparison, if you want to yeah. see the difference between the, the black and the, the white there. Yeah. Black, everybody would recognize that, right? And then you got what PJ's got. Yeah. More more barred, mm -hmm. vertical bars down the side. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times the, there'll be a, a, the whites are a bit narrower. Longer, not as tall. Yeah, yep. These fish have a little bit better build on them than most our southern lakes, but yeah, yeah, beautiful fish. But those white crappies seem to have bigger mouths too. Yeah, like they do. For their length, they, have, they, yep. they have the pie hole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the the technique that James and I are using, we call it twitching. Um, but we're, what we're using is a cylinder bobber that's weighted at the bottom. And then on the other end, we've got the 32nd ounce hair jig. Um, so when we're slowly reeling and twitching this in, what happens is this bobber rocks and it lifts the bait about one inch to an inch and a half. So the, the way I look at it, it's almost like as if you were vertical jigging it um, through, through the ice. That, that, that's kind of the motion it has while it slowly swims forward. So, you know, using a, a, a normal bobber, you're probably not gonna get the same action. One of these weighted cylinders or a weighted round were that when, when you twitch, that bait falls abruptly each time. And that's getting that vertical jigging action that definitely seems to seal the deal on this technique. Got that one. Clap yeah, eye. it's the right kind, boss. I mean, that thing's hooked so good, I'm just gonna swing it. Are you? Okay, yeah. good. That thing isn't going anywhere. Heck yeah. Nice. A little twitch. That's a meaty one. That little hair jig. I mean, you can see how deep we're fishing from the nose of that fish to the bottom of that bobber. That's it. Ooh, nice dark one. Pretty cool. You're just twitching away and all of a sudden the bobber's just gone. Later, dude. Oop, there he is. There you go, boss. All right. Definitely a crappie. Yep, another nice black one. You've got kind Red of a mud. little honey hole space right out here. Yeah, pretty much right off the edge of that boulders on the gravel. Not a bad one. The 360 makes it pretty darn easy to know where, where they should be. Yeah, absolutely. That uh, That is definitely the best tool for painting a picture down there. Nice fish. Kind of shorten up my lead a little bit there. Um, probably took a foot off it or so yep. on that cast. Maybe they're moving up a little higher. We're up to 66.4 degrees. That's crazy. That's a full six degree jump. And we have yet to catch a male crappie that's melting. No. Yep. So like you said, this is just on the very front edge. We are on the leading fast. edge. Fishing is all about connecting with nature. Then grabbing nature by the lip and holding it up for a picture. Randall GM in Aiken, Minnesota's only haggle-free Chevrolet, Buick, and GMC dealer is a proud sponsor of In-Depth Outdoors TV. Our Brandle value price ensures that you don't have to spend your entire day haggling to get a great deal. And every new vehicle comes with our exclusive gimmick-free lifetime powertrain warranty. 
Whether you're in need of service, sales, parts, or body shop repair, stop by our state-of-the-art facility in Aiken or visit us 24-7 at BrandleGM.com. New Mega Live Imaging shows you what's below in real time with edge-to-edge -edge clarity and no gaps in coverage. All so you can turn must-watch detail into non-stop action. Only from Humminbird. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. We say man needs food, clothing, and shelter. When it comes to shelter, we like the Outbreak 450i with its full-size no-trip door that's nearly 74% bigger than a standard door, making it much easier to load and unload. With 75 square feet of fishable area, you'll be warm and comfortable during your day on the ice. Check out the Outbreak 450i and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. Right there. Got him. Oof. Oh, there's a bigger that, mouth. That looked like a nice one. Oh, you got a pretty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> got it going on back here. Nice fish. And I'd say water heating up, fishing's picking up. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's, that's a, that's a, that's that's a, a good crappie. Crop. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think we finally got a legit one here. Man, that's Not a that the, oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, my God. So sad. Dude, that was a big. The mouth of that thing was like that big. Oop, there we go. Feels like a decent and one. And a baby. Good crop. Yep. Boy, that thing is supercharged. Oh, yeah. There we go. That guy's got some shoulders on him. Not bad. Oh, there he is. The red car That's a still? cropper. Yep. Oh, yours was just down, too. I saw that. <laughs> there he is. And you got him. Yes, sir. Nice. It's almost like they just moved back in here a little bit. Mine's, mine's a whiskers. Oh, yours looks funny. Yeah. Where are you? I was hoping we had that uh, elusive double there, but uh, PJ's crappie turned into a catfish. <laughs> I had that happen to me earlier. I'll tell you what, since we've got on this little twitching program, we have consistently put some darn nice fish in the Yeah, boat. we have. I like that fish. He was persistent because he put my bobber down once and I missed him. <laughs> yeah. And he came right back and did it again. Oop, there's another one. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's a Ooh, good one. Come here, baby. They're just stacked right on that. Come here, buddy. That is just absolutely perfect little crappie <laughs> net. The one-hander, nice and light. Get that one back. Another white bill. I think I found a little colony of them both sides. Yeah, they're just like right there. Yep. Gotcha. Twitched them right into it. Had to have it happen. Yep. Gotcha. Another white from the white hole. How good does it feel <laughs> to be out here in the boat? Yeah, this is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, like we said, it's been it's been a really long winter and, and kind of a winter a spring. Horrible spring. <laughs> yeah. And in, in typical fashion on years like this, it just flips on a switch and here we are today high at 86. So every bite, every species everywhere is just kind of taken off right now. Yeah. Yep. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was Both like within side. rod tip distance. <laughs> Ooh, that's a nice one. Very nice. Oh, points for working it all the way back to the yeah. boat, right? Yeah, absolutely. Nice black crappie. There's something about this method that's just kind of rewarding versus sitting staring at bobbers, you know, just being able to um, interact with these fish and kind of provoke the strike. What? Well, it's a big crappie. Coming with the net. Nice that little black crappie. That is a real big here. one. Let me see. We'll do the dance oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's a dandy. So I can bring him back to you. Oh, Thank oh. you. They are tall. They are. Awesome fish. What you didn't see on camera there was I was kind of on a run of catfish. So uh, it was kind of hard to take my hook set seriously because <laughs> I think I had like six dumb little cats in a row. <laughs> I, that's a female. You can yeah. see the little belly bulge there. Good. Back and do your business. I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, Mega 360. 
and what we're seeing here today. Um, this is absolutely the perfect tool for the job. We're in this shallow water, two foot, and this 360 is literally painting a picture of our surroundings. So right back behind us, we have Eurasian milfoil weed line. And as soon as you get out of that mud and onto the gravel, the, the weeds cut off right there. And in the middle of this, which is what we're casting at, it's all boulders in the middle of this gravel bed. And the fish have been positioning right off the edge of those bigger boulders onto the gravel. And what I kind of envision these fish doing right now is I think these fish are up here starting to broom beds. But as far as getting a good clear picture of what's going on, even in this super shallow water, we can see everything uh, all around us and how these fish are positioned right off the edge of those bigger rocks. Um, I, I can't think of a better tool in this shallow water. Norsk Lithium offers a complete lineup of lithium ion batteries to power your ice electronics that provide huge weight savings and the power you need to fish from sun up to sun down. Available in 7.5, 15, and 20 amp hour capacities, Norsk Lithium batteries are perfectly matched to power your mechanical, digital, and live imaging sonar systems, featuring two patent pending USB ports for powering all of your USB devices and an integrated LED power indicator. Find your perfect battery online at norsklithium.com. I'm not like you and my friend. You're not very much like With me. You. I see things differently. You're my best friend, yes, my best friend. Rolling through this world together. You're my best friend, very best friend, very best friends forever and ever. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters in Walker, Minnesota has the hottest products for ice fishing at unbeatable prices. Everything from Garmin, Ice Electronics, Ice Shelters, and Ice Clothing from all the top brands. And the newest lithium-powered augers with special everyday pricing on the Garmin LiveScope Ice Bundle. Whether you're visiting us in Walker, Minnesota, or placing an order online at reedsports.com, our state-of-the-art distribution center ensures you'll get your order fast. Reed's Family Outdoor Outfitters offers the best service, best price, best advice, guaranteed. Oh, there's a big one. That thing is a giant. Again, right next to the side of the yep. boat. This thing is big. Come on, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That is a slab that's, right there. That's a there. big white, isn't it? Big old white, yeah. Whew. That's Heck what yeah. we're talking about right there. <laughs> USA, USA. <laughs> and that, that fish actually came up with it. I, I was just about to reel my bait in. Yeah. And felt the weight and set the hook. Doesn't matter how you come tight on them, just as no. long as you do. There, I got it. What a gorgeous fish right there. <laughs> Beautiful. I would say that one's over that 14 that, range, probably 14 legit. and a half. Yeah. That, that's that giant mouth you like to see coming up out of that dirty yes, water. Yes, sir. That is a typical shallow water, fertile southern Wisconsin tank. Super deep. Yep. Very thick. Yeah, thick. Off you go, bud. Oh, there you go. Look how dark this one is. Its fins are black. Nice. <laughs> Look at that. That hair jig, it's the same hair jig I fished all day long. It's still in great shape. Yeah. There's the fins I'm talking about, and the cheek down through here just gets black. And they're not like that most of the year. I would say that's a little short of our average. I mean, yeah. what do you say, like 11-inch 11, 11 average today, maybe? Yeah, someplace between 11 and 12 inch, I yeah. would say, yeah. That thing is holding up pretty darn good. And as far as uh, the hair is concerned, there's one. still in really good condition. <laughs> Tricked that one right into it. I just did the old stall out. Ooh, that's a good one. Oof. That is a good one. Yep, that's one of those next level ones a little bit. Nice. Beautiful fish. Well, just makes sense. This is when we start catching some females, right? Yep, yep, and that is exactly what's going on. There's such awesome broad shoulders on these fish. Right? Tall back, nice and thick. Very nice. Off you go, bud. So that brings us to the end of today's show and the final episode. Uh, I've been doing this show since 
I was a young man. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not young anymore. <laughs> but the good news is I still have the drive to continue to, to do this. Mm -hmm. And with the help of good friends like PJ and Marcus Quam and Connor Kleiss, Dave Kuntz, uh, those are the guys that are with us out there on the ice or uh, uh, on the water. And then of course you got guys that are in the studio or behind the camera. We got Jacob Hollis behind the camera, Ben Larson in the studio, Pat McSherry doing co-host and editing. It takes an incredible team to make this happen. So I want to thank everybody that's played a very positive, uplifting role in making season 16 one of our best ever. Uh, I did just look at the odometer of the pickup truck. Uh, we're going to have a contest, let people guess how many tens of th thousands of miles we put on it this year. But let me tell you, we've been places, covered a lot of cool bites, and that odometer tells a story. So I'll be looking for that on social media. We'll give away some cool prizes to the person that guesses the closest number of miles on the, uh, the Brandle uh, pickup truck. And also, I just want to send out a huge thanks to uh, all of our fans, everybody that watches this show. Uh, the little messages you send us throughout the course of the year, uh, the emails, you know, thanking us for a great show or offering, hey, you look a little tired in this week's show, <laughs> you know, find a way to get some extra sleep. Uh, those little things, I take so much energy from that, and I know you do too. Yeah, I do, I do. I love hearing from everybody. Um, there's a lot of positive energy, uh, you know, and, and, and we feel very grateful to be out here, uh, you know, trying to educate and chasing these fish and the bites. Uh, and just really thankful for everybody at home. So that's the correct words. Yeah. Grateful, thankful. Without you, we couldn't do this. And uh, thank yous also need to go out to our great sponsors. I'm never gonna tell anybody that they should spend their money one place or the other. All I'll ever ask is give our great roster of sponsors the chance to earn your business. The companies that support us, uh, it's a very small number and without the viewers support the love of the show and of course the support from the sponsors and none of this would work. So I really want to thank everybody that's watching this final episode. Trust that we're going to be back next year for season 17. We've been working for the last six months already starting to plan how we're going to make it bigger and better and go do new things. So from PJ Vic and I, from everybody here at InDepth Outdoors, from behind the camera in the editing bay, we thank you for watching and we'll see you next year for the start of season 17. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.